Good morning, my name is David Thompson. I'm pastor here at First Lutheran Church of Chickasha. We're excited that you are joining us for this YouTube condensed service for Epiphany 7. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we have not lived as we ought. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor our brothers and sisters as ourselves. Our lives often look like those who are lost in the darkness of sin, rather than those called into your glorious light. For the sake of Christ, we are bold to ask your forgiveness. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to live in the light and serve you in all we do. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for your sake forgives you all your sin. I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the collect for the day. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this Sunday of Epiphany is taken from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 13, and we speak it responsibly. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, selected verses 21 to 26 and 30 to 42. Paul writes, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses, as you ought, and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. 
But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. Glory to you, O Lord. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What is included in every commercial for a new exercise machine? Isn't it the young bodybuilder with abs of steel? They're always slicked down with oil and struggling to keep a straight face while telling us they got that body by using this product just one hour a day. Everyone wants a perfect body. Now, I happen to be fortunate. I have a job that requires me to cover up my rebellious body with a robe and vestments. <laughs> yeah, but we're not so different from those people living in the city of Corinth. They adored the human figure of the athlete, and you can go there today and still see the stone starting blocks in the middle of the city where they regularly had foot races. We want the perfect body so badly that you can't turn on the TV, and go shopping or listen to the radio without noticing all the things that show our desire for it. You know, some examples of those things would be fitness gyms, tanning salons, vitamins, juicers, weight loss diet supplements, and last but not least, cosmetic surgery. Now that we have mapped the human genome, one of the first uses most likely will be to engineer the perfect body. What would you want in a perfect body? Probably no fat, Slim hips, strong bones and muscles, clear eyes, full head of hair, no pain or sickness, no aging, no death. Jesus promised us the perfect body 
at the resurrection. But we're just too impatient or untrusting to wait. So we just continue to dream the impossible dream and maintain these bodies the best we can, or maybe as worst we can. There's never been anyone who possessed the perfect body on this earth. The evidence for this fact are all the same things that show our desire. Perfect bodies would not require such high maintenance as exercise, diet, medications, and doctors. The industry that makes walkers, wheelchairs, and surgical equipment are not expecting a downturn in their future economy, and neither are funeral homes for that matter. The Corinthians had always believed what their eyes told them that death ends it all. So they put great stock in preparing the body to compete and experience the pleasures of life now, since the body buried in the ground soon decays and is no more. The reason people are so willing to pay for the perfect body now is that in one form or another, we see the logic in the Corinthian thinking. The great danger, of course, is that it leads us away from the higher things in life, like ethics, morals, concern for the life and property of others, faith, and service to God. Such was the conflict in the Corinthian church. And last week, we heard Paul masterfully defend the resurrection of Christ, which assures us that he is true God. He had said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again. Well, on the third day, he exercised that power. It assures us that the father has accepted the sacrifice of his son. It appeased his wrath, reconciled him to man again. And so as a testimony to us, he raised our redeemer up from the grave bodily. And finally, we are assured that Christ has become the first fruit of them that sleep. He is the first of a long line of believers that shall rise. Because I live, he says, you shall live also. Here are the Corinthians, you could see the gears working in their head. And they, they had to stop Paul, I'm sure. They asked, okay, we can see there is a resurrection, but what about the bodies? What about the fact that bodies decompose? What are we to expect of the deformed, the maimed, the blind, the deaf, the mentally retarded and paraplegic? Paul, what about those who have been burned to ashes, huh? Our experience shows there is no body to resurrect, so how is it raised? Paul takes an example from their experience, if that's what it takes, to explain the answer. How foolish, says Paul. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. You see, God is at work here. We readily accept the miracle of seeds planted in the ground, dying, then suddenly life begins again, producing an entirely new plant. Our scientists can diagram the stages, explain the conditions that make it happen, but they can't tell you why? They have even planted seeds from an ancient mummy, thousands of years old, and were surprised to find the sprout of a grain never before cataloged. Why were they surprised? God's word of promise, dear friends, does not end when things are buried, no matter for how long, no matter how decimated or scattered. You know, um, quite a few years ago, after Mount St. Helens uh, erupted, the National Geographic featured an article, and it was entitled, Mount St. Helens, Nature on Fast Forward. The article reported, All of us were surprised at the rate at which this landscape was colonized again. We were thinking, gosh, how long is it going to be before anything comes back here? Within just a few years, scientists found flora and fauna pioneering in the niches created by the eruption's various geologic disturbances. Dr. Franklin said, St. Helens was the epiphany where finally the scales fell from our eyes, and we said, 
Oh my gosh, we haven't been thinking clearly. Dear friends, scales always fall from our eyes when we begin to think and see that God is at work here. His might is not shortened, nor his power curtailed by death. From God's omnipotence, the dead are raised. Okay, Paul. So uh, what will this new resurrection body be like? See, at first he seems to say that they will be the same. He says, when you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. Every seed, you see, will produce its own kind. The same bodies that have been sown into the ground will rise again. It will not be another body to the disappointment of a surgeon who wants to transplant heads someday. No. Now, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, rats, I don't want this fat, pudgy old body. I want the perfect body. But wait a minute. Consider some very important aspects of God's plan. Because Christ had the same body on Easter that he had on Good Friday, Mary and the disciples at Emmaus could recognize and know him. When we rise with the same body, our loved ones and friends will also recognize us in heaven. It will be a glorious homecoming. At the same time, Paul says that our resurrected bodies will be radically different from the one we have now. And we breathe a sigh of relief saying, thank you and show me the abs. Well, I can't tell you what we'll look like in that regard, but the Lord who created our physical bodies will give us glorified bodies. Our bodies in this present state or condition will be changed in a flash, no longer full of lust, or sin, no longer hungry, thirsty, in pain, or terminal. But they shall be real bodies, free from sin and its debilitating effects, because Jesus Christ has removed them. Is this important? Yes. Yes, it is. We were created to be complete with mind, body, and soul. Do you remember that old movie, Ghost? The only true analogy I can use from it is how frustrated Patrick Swayze felt without a body. He had no connection, no way to make an impact on those around him. In fact, it was loneliness at its worst form. But Christ's death and resurrection has rescued us from that loneliness and guaranteed us the very opposite, a body that is imperishable, glorious, powerful, and spiritual. For us today, the word spiritual usually suggests something ethereal and non-substantial like Casper the Ghost. But Paul means a body no longer both bad and good, but one completely under the sway of the Holy Spirit. One that is like Christ's glorious body, no longer confined to the limitations of time and space, nor to corruption or imperfection of any kind. In verse 50, Paul says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, that simply means that these present, sinful, decaying bodies must and will be changed. Imagine what we will experience by God's grace. We shall step onto a shore and find that it is heaven. Take hold of a hand and find it to be Christ's hand. Breathe new air and find it celestial air. Feel invigorated and find that it is immortality. Pass from this storm right into an unbroken calm. Wake up and finding that we're home. You can only do that with the perfect body God himself has promised us. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through true faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
You, O Lord, have brought your people out of darkness and obscurity, gathering them together wherever the word of God is preached in its purity and the sacraments administered faithfully. In your eyes we are the body of Christ, saved by grace and strengthened by the word, whereby we give you praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen and lead us as the body of Christ in these bodies of conflict, so that we reach out and make contact and speak the life-giving words of Jesus to those outside the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make a difference to the bodies of nations in conflict around the world by instilling peace in their souls through Christ. Make a difference to the bodies of farmers struggling to support their business and land on an insufficient market value for their crops. The same goes for truckers in their vocations, in restaurant owners and the oil industry, as there is so many natural and political obstacles to their growth and contribution to the body of this economy. Pour out from your providential hand the things we need for our bodies now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow your healing grace to the sick in body that we name before you here, especially Marcy Clark, as she is suffering from a broken shoulder. We pray that uh, they will be able to get in and uh, correct that, put it back together with her uh, COPD causing a great deal of concern in terms of uh, anesthesiologist and breathing. So be with her, make this happen, O oh Lord, um, with your presence. We pray for Laverne uh, Green with uh, her arrhythmia kind of returned and that they will be able to uh, correct that soon. We pray for Dorothea Thorson, uh, who is suffering some abdominal pain. Willie Mae Gherkins with uh, some arrhythmia and difficulty swallowing and her dizziness. Lord, help her uh, through that. She uh, needs a great deal of uh, uh, correction, if not, uh, give her a great deal of peace and comfort. We pray for Janelle Goulet, recovering from uh, COVID and waiting on a wheelchair repair. We pray for Reverend Dave Heitner of Good Shepherd Duncan, battling cancer and COVID. Strengthen and restore him, O oh Lord. We pray for Delita, Millie Rabine's niece with cancer. Elliot Strutton, Harold Moling, Bob Walden, Karen Collins, and the homebound, Evelyn Lyle, and we lift up Dr. Jerome Ursuline at McAllister. And also be with those we know and name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, may our body open our mouths and hands to witness of your love in Christ, and all people in our community may find in us a place of refuge and hope. Bless our leaders with wisdom and the spirit to follow in your ways. Lead the district presidents and the seminary placement committee to connect our need and that servant you desire to preach, teach, and administer the sacraments at this altar into the future. Now we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray into your care, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Well, thank you for spending this time with us. We invite you to uh, come in in person if you're able to next week, uh, which will be uh, Transfiguration Sunday and the end of Epiphany. If not, then we will have another YouTube condensed service uh, next week. So look for it here. The Lord be with you. Amen.